What's up YouTube and welcome back to the Mobile Max Car Audio Channel. I'm Orlando and today we're finally going to be reviewing the 9.7 inch Tesla style radio for the third generation Acura TL which ranges from years 2004 all the way to 2008. This radio will replace your factory radio along with your navigation or LCD display. So this radio is manufactured by Zhaoing or Zhaoing, however you say their name, I'm not even sure. But it is sold by various sellers on Alibaba, mostly Navitech, but they do have other sellers that sell a similar unit. All right, guys, before we begin, I want to thank everyone who has bought a harness from us. Our plug-and-play harnesses make installing an aftermarket radio in your car very easy. I also want to give a special shout-out to all the people who were extra patient when COVID-19 impacted my family and orders were delayed. I really appreciate you guys. appreciate you guys. I really appreciate your patience. Thank you for supporting Mobile Max. I hope everyone's staying safe out there. Also, um, as always, I'm going to ask that you like and subscribe. I did a lot of research and messing around for this radio so that I could put this review together and make something coherent that makes sense and that will really help you guide in a decision. And one last thing is stick around for the end of the video. I actually have finally figured out how to install an aftermarket amp in this car without wiretapping, without cutting any wires. It's kind of a plug and play solution. It allows you to put the amp kind of anywhere you want and it's you can even do it with the factory radio. So stick around for that. I'm gonna kind of show it at the end of the video and then, then I'll make a follow up video of the actual amp installation and an Acura TL so you guys can see that as well. But all right guys, let's jump into the review. We're gonna start with the screen of this thing. So this uh, radio has a couple different pieces. We're gonna talk about the tablet kind of features first the internals, and then we'll get into sound quality, audio, and all that stuff. So if you're not really interested, you're looking for a certain thing, check the description. I have some timestamps, kind of what I talk about when, because this is going to be a rather lengthy video. So let's start with the screen. 9.7 inch screen from corner to corner. It is 768 by 1024 with a PPI of 234. So 234 pixels per inch isn't the highest. Your phone may have more, but it makes the screen very nice. It, the colors are very good very vibrant it's very responsive with the you know the internals that are paired with this thing overall it just feels of high quality the screen and it's a capacitive touchscreen meaning that the screen is kind of like the one on your cell phone so we've all dealt with the resistive touchscreen and those are kind of the ones on cheaper units they kind of have like some give to them when you punch in they don't really feel like glass resistive touchscreens are great for you know keeping costs low for manufacturers but they don't feel all that great and they're kind of not as responsive as a capacitive touchscreen. So I'm really happy it's a capacitive touchscreen on here. And behind this capacitive touchscreen is an IPS panel. All the resolution is good, the colors are good. Because you have this IPS panel, it means that you have these very good viewing angles where you don't get this color washout. So an LCD panel, especially if you're sitting at home, you might have an older LCD panel for a TV. You'll notice that if you kind of sit, you know, in front of it you have a good viewing angle if you sit kind of to the side the colors look a little weird and if you look to the left it's like completely unwatchable so with the IPS panel you kind of don't have those issues especially in this vehicle because the positions where someone can sit they can all see the screen very well and with the IPS panel the viewing angles and the color doesn't get washed out even if someone stuck their head in or was looking from out here they could see the screen how you see it and not be like oh what is that the capacitive touchscreen has five points of multi-touch which means that you can it allows for gestures so you can swipe up you can swipe down um, like you would in native apps so like let's I'm not connected to the internet but let's say a YouTube video was to load I could easily swipe the video uh, up and down back and forth you know how you would with a traditional phone kind of gesture uh, so that's really nice really responsive of uh, it's a cool feature of the radio and the multi-touch allows you to also pinch in to zoom, pinch out, some of those native things that you're used to on your cell phone transfer over to this radio. Um, along with the, uh, on top of the touch screen, they actually put in a screen protector. So let me show you that. So once the screen comes off, you can kind of see the screen protector along the edges. It doesn't really look very good when the screen is off, but it prevents you from scratching and accidentally damaging with something. Uh, so it, I chose to leave it on. But it, once your screen is on, you don't really notice it. Overall, the screen looks of very high quality, and the capacitive touchscreen feels of very high quality. So I give props to Xiaomi and Navitech, whoever designed this unit on that. Now, below our screen, we have another interface method, which is our buttons. 
Now our buttons can be reprogrammed to whatever feature you'd like, but off the factory configuration or when the unit ships, it comes with a power button, which really works more like mute. Then you have a home button, which will bring you to your home screen. You have a Bluetooth button that normally brings you to Bluetooth calling. So you'll come to this screen. I reprogrammed it to go to Bluetooth audio. You have back and back forward, forward and pause, pause, and then you have band. So these buttons can all be reprogrammed. They have a utility in here that allows you to go in here and kind of map the keys to what you want. Uh, the way they are programmed from the factory isn't bad, but you will want to customize it. But you, most likely you're going to want to customize it. Also, these buttons um, don't feel of the highest quality. They don't feel cheap, but they don't feel like the buttons that you have here on the TL. Um, and they also don't line up evenly. So like the there is these buttons after you press them return evenly, so to say, like to their mating surface. You don't have a staggered button like this. On these, they do. So my power button actually sticks up higher than my home button and so on and so on. So it's kind of like they're stacked together like this. So that to me being nitpicky, it's not really a big deal, but it is something you will notice. You kind of can see it in the shadows and we touch the buttons, etc. Um, so I don't really did, that's not a deal breaker by any means, but I did want to mention it. The other thing is if you're installing this radio to replace your factory radio, you're going to miss your, your knobs or you're going to miss your knobs that help you adjust different settings within the radio. Here, if I want to lower the volume, I have a quick button right here, but it's a touch button. It's not an actual hard physical button that's easy to find when you're driving. You do have your steering wheel control buttons, uh, which work also, but again, I was very used to the knobs, so not having the knobs, I find myself driving and then going like this and going, oh wait, I have to turn it down. And to hit that button, it, you can kind of use this as your guide, but it's very easy to miss it and for you to constantly try to hit it and then be like, why is the volume not going down? So that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to, if you do plan on buying this unit. There guys, along with these buttons um, to interface with the radio, you also have your microphone, which is these two little holes right here and a reset button here. So if your tablet ever freezes or the radio ever freezes, you get a small pin, you can stick it in here and it'll hard reset the, the tablet, kind of like if you were pushing a power button on your power button on your phone. And the mic, even though it's down here, it, it um, people, no one has claimed that they can't hear me or that I sound muffled or anything like that. The sound quality is pretty good, and I'll show you guys that later on. The, now that we covered the screen and the way to interface with this radio, let's talk about the internal specs. I'm gonna lay my review out kind of how I would a tablet first. So. The most important part to a tablet is going to be the processor, RAM, and storage configurations. So let's talk about that first. So inside of this radio is an Intel Atom based chip. So it's an SC9853 with eight cores and each core uh, tops out at 1.8 gigahertz. So what does that even mean? Basically these chips are supposed to be for mobile applications that needs some kind of computing but not terribly heavy computing which is exactly what this would be meant for so normally chips like that go inside phones um, lower end laptops tablets and that's what they chose to go for this radio now that chip is more than enough to power this radio and do what you need it to do it's responsive the eight cores work well if you are going to be trying to game on this thing playing PUBG, playing other games on here it will struggle if you are going to use heavy compute applications for some reason, you're thinking of replacing your laptop with this, I don't know who in the world, but let's say that was the case, that would not be a smart move. This will struggle if you start launching applications like this as a computer. If you treat it as a simple tablet where you're just running one app at a time, maybe music and a video or music, that doesn't make any sense, maybe music and maps or a video and maps, that's more than the radio can handle. But once you start throwing compute heavy applications, it will begin to struggle. Paired with that chip are two configurations of RAM and storage. So RAM is the um, memory that your applications run in. So whenever something happens within the app, uh, that's running in RAM. Storage is kind of where the application is stored and then it's loaded into RAM, but I'm not gonna get into all that. You want 64 goal. gigabytes uh, of storage. And you Just want what you wanna know is, and the reason for that is this radio needs an internet connection to use all the functionality that you would want so like to stream music if you're not streaming for bluetooth you want to stream pandora right from the radio you can but you're going to need data so if you don't have a hotspot, if you don't want to put a 3g 3g sim card inside of this you can load your own music onto this it has usb ports you can transfer your music 
and your library from your phone, your USB drive, whatever, to the radio. When you do that, you are going to lose some memory. So at 32 gigabytes, you're probably only going to have about 24 to 20 gigabytes for your own stuff. Once you start downloading applications and interfacing with them every day, that storage is going to go down. And then once you add your library of music, videos, etc., it's going to come down even further where you're going to be redlining your mem your storage. So maybe you'll use 28 of the 32 gigs. And that's a little too close to be future-proof, especially if you're going to spend money on a radio that you plan to keep you know, for a couple of years. So what I recommend is going with the 64 gigabytes, doubling your storage. It makes sense. And there's really very little chance unless you listen to a ton of music or you're watching 20 movies in your car in a week or something where you're going to top that out. Also with the RAM, 2 gigabytes is more than enough to run a tablet and most tablets in the marketplace come with 2 gigabytes. But you'd rather opt out, you'd rather upgrade to the 4 so that you don't have any limitations now or in the future. So you're kind of future proofing yourself there because you put yourself in a position after you spend all this money to then not be happy because you can't do everything you want to do. So I recommend that four gigabytes of, of RAM and then 64 gigabytes of storage, which is the more expensive option, but it's the option that makes the most sense. I didn't find any information on the actual specs, memory speeds of the storage or the RAM, but they perform well. They, they um, don't cause any delays. You're not over, you know, you're, you're not going over RAM and the flash storage is fast, it writes and reads fast, so if you are installing apps or downloading something, there's no limitation there. You'll see that this is going to download very quickly and install rather quickly. Um, so overall, in terms of the specs of a tablet, this radio is doing pretty well. This tablet radio is doing pretty well. So this radio runs Android 8.1, and they refer to it as pure Android in their marketing. And the reason for that is they're making minimal tweaks to the Android interface and kind of putting everything inside of their own launcher. So when you hit home, on top you're on top of an Android layer, and this is their own custom launcher slash Android interface that they've built. And it works very well. Everything you want is here. But it's still not native Android, so to say, because you're not running your own launcher. You can change the launcher. And as you can see, your climate controls still show up over it. And also, your notifications about doors being open still show up over that launcher. I'm going to show you what the other launcher looks like, the Ag Agama launcher. Um, if you mess with the settings a little bit, you can kind of get the screen to look how you want it to. Um, and this doesn't look bad here. Let's go back in and let's change the car to an Acura so it's more, we feel more at home. So there you go. And of course, you people. Of course, you guys are familiar with these launchers. Um, can get more into you know the settings that you want, but this is just to show you um, that you can run another launcher. Again, we're going to go back into the car launcher free, and that's what this one looks like. Mess with it a little. So you go there, your apps, and if you hit home, it actually if once I select one, it'll prompt you for whatever launcher you want and now we're back to the native launcher so installing those launchers is just as easy as installing any app how you would so now we're gonna go and grab the Nova launcher in case you for some reason wanted this to be a complete tablet so there you go if you don't like their launcher and you want to put your own similar to a tablet um, right there you go Similar to how it, you know, your regular tablet would work, uh, you can use the Nova Launcher. And again, if you hit home, you can set the Nova Launcher as your default, and you'll always bring be brought back to this menu. And you can always switch the launcher, which is a pretty cool feature of the radio, if you ask me, um, to let you customize it in that way. But um, most people are just going to keep the standard launcher, and it does its job. But I just wanted to showcase that that launcher can be changed. And you do have access to traditional um, settings for Android. So here you can see like it's very limited, but there are settings here for that are Android kind of native uh, that you can mess with. And then you can also find other ones, but you're kind of locked out of most of them. And then there are radio specific settings that you can only get to with a code from the seller. Since this radio is running pure Android and it's not rooted, you can access the Play Store 
and install apps from the Play Store without any problem. There are no limitations. The only thing is it's going to register as a tablet with the Play Store. So there are certain apps that are uh, phone only that you won't have access to. And there are other apps um, that will look a little funky because of the layout that this is a tablet. But you might be, be used to using that app only on a phone. And this has a actual setting menu for the features of the interface between Android and the vehicle but you're locked out of that unless you reach out to your manufacturer now I have this code I will show it to you but that's later on in the video right now we're just covering the Android part of this unit so even though you're locked out of some menus it's kind of all the stuff that you don't really need so if you need to troubleshoot it's important but for the average user who just wants their radio to work it's going to work um, how you expect it to and you're gonna have the access to the settings that you're looking for. Alright guys that's mostly it for the specs now let's talk about some of the features of the radio. So one of the big features that everyone looks for in their radio is gonna be Bluetooth. So with this radio you get Bluetooth 5.0 which is pretty cool that means you get all the you know music streaming that you want you get the information you're looking for you know when you're playing a song etc you get a dialer you can sync your contacts sync your contacts you have call history uh, and then you know you can change the pairing of the phone and the name of the device so the Bluetooth features are pretty cool you have a built-in dialer you can come in here you can change the settings of the device and set auto answer to on you can change the pa pairing password you know you can you have your AT, A2DP sync or just your Bluetooth audio streaming you get a call history, you get your contacts, and then a dialer. So here, let me just pair my phone real quick. Playing YouTube music, you could see here's the uh, song I'm playing. It's I'm On One by DJ Khaled. And as you can see, the information from the song is showing up on the screen. And then the artist information is showing up on the screen. Also, I can pause straight from here. I can play from here. I can actually stop and I can go forward and back. Um, it auto will switch like a regular radio normally would so so I can call you know right from here and I'm calling Domino's but uh, and then you have your controls the only thing is you can map these buttons to control uh, calls meaning like I could make this button hang up or this button hang up but these buttons don't work these buttons will stay with the factory HFL unit if it's unplugged you know you'll get no response but they will not function with the aftermarket um, Tesla style radio. So just know you can map these to answer phone calls, etc. but these buttons, or if you have 0708, the buttons that are here also will go here. Now it's playing a different song. So again, it's Bluetooth 5.0. It's everything you would expect the radio to have in terms of Bluetooth. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if you can hear it, but one of the bugs we'll talk about later on is when I'm flipping. So this Bluetooth audio, this is Bluetooth calling. It's switching um, inputs. Uh, within the internal chip of the radio so if I have volume playing you hear that pop and that's one of the bugs we'll talk about later on but um, one of the bugs I found within the Bluetooth app is if I change the song here I'm sorry if I change the song here uh, now it's not doing it there we go so now, you saw the song that's actually playing is Headlines by Drake. But the song that's showing here is Big Bank featuring 2 Chains and Nicki Minaj. So the song that's actually playing is Headlines by Drake, but the song that's shown here is Big, Banks, uh, Big Bank by YG. So that's a bug I found. It's a little annoying because you're like, oh, well, this isn't the song that's playing. But the audio quality is... is what you expect it to be so dealing with that bug isn't the end of the world so along with the Bluetooth another big feature of this radio that a lot of people are looking at is going to be the navigation system so as you can see I'm playing music in the background your Bluetooth music will play in the background unless you go to another source that also plays music then you'll hear that pop and then you can your source now has access to the um, audio out of the radio and it'll play your source so let's jump into the navigation so this has a built-in GPS antenna and navigation so I'm going to show you first this uses the iGo navigation 
which is standard in most uh, Chinese radios like Jensen's, which are from overseas. They also run the same, same iGo application as their GPS. Now this uses the GPS antenna that's in the vehicle uh, for its GPS guidance, so you don't need data. It also has points of interest already stored, and it has lights and other information that you may be looking for already within the system, so you don't have to go and be connected to the One of the things I did find about the navigation was that it has warnings enabled. So if you're if it picks up that the speed limit is available in that area and you're going over that speed limit, it will beep. If it picks up that there's a red camera in that area from its database, then it will beep. It has some audible warnings to keep you out of trouble that are kind of annoying and not what you expect and not traditionally on in other GPS systems. Um, so that was a little strange and weird to get used to. Also, I didn't use the navigation system all that much simply because if you're going to use this radio, you should leverage the features of a tablet that it has. So you should connect it to some sort of internet connection. I'm lucky enough to have a hotspot on my phone. So I use my hotspot to provide this data and I just use Google Maps instead. I don't use their navigation system. Their navigation system does work. It works well. Right now it's looking for a GPS signal. We're inside a building with a metal roof so I don't think it's really going to get through. Once I'm outside, I'll capture some B-roll video and show you guys that. Now that we have our route selected, we're going to start driving again. Uh, you can select your route while driving, obviously I don't encourage that, but if th things do change, you can change the route while driving, there is no lock. So you can set a destination to a point of interest, like a Home Depot, airport, etc. Or you can actually... 500 feet, turn left. Then take the next left. Recalculating route. Take the next right. So that beep is what I'm referring to. There are certain other circumstances where that beep will um, announce... After 800 itself. feet, turn right and those beeps get very annoying especially on the highway for speeding um, over a certain amount of uh, miles per hour you will get that warning and it's a Take good the next right it's good when there's a, a camera like a red light camera nearby Reached your destination. Guys, well, here's a little more of the navigation. So you can see I can select a new route, I can change how loud I want the guidance or if I want it off completely. I can get a three a 2D view instead of a 3D view. I can uh, <coughs> pause my guidance, continue my guidance. Uh, I can star, I can give it more information. So there's a lot in this application. Obviously, I'm not going to cover it all in this review. But I do want to mention that it does come with the iGo navigation. That's what it's referred to. Uh, and it's very powerful, but not very often used because you get so used to having Waze or Google Maps or other applications like that so quickly available 
that you forget that to use the built-in navigation but it is very helpful when you want to quickly look at a map of where you're at I find that extremely helpful and also when you're looking for a certain house it gives you the addresses of what is what on each side so that's super helpful as well uh, now that we talked about Bluetooth and navigation let's talk about some of the other features that are a little uh, less known or looked for so this radio comes equipped with wi Wi-Fi antenna so you can connect it to any near nearby Wi-Fi and that's what I was talking about earlier with my hotspot you can easily connect it to any Wi-Fi network um, within your car outside your car so you're, maybe you're outside your house you're inside your car with someone and you guys want to watch a movie you can you can use that Wi-Fi from your house uh, the Wi-Fi antenna is pretty good you're not gonna reach you know hundreds of feet but it is what you expect out of a normal device with Wi-Fi for its range sim card it's 3G you can have it activated I believe for a tablet I don't think a phone sim card will work uh, so here we go I'm getting a phone call so you can see it shows up on the bottom uh, and you can just answer it and then your microphone is right here so you don't need to install a mic it's already in the radio hello hello Hey, what's up, babe? Hey, okay, fine. Uh, I love you. Love you too. So yeah, guys, for your Bluetooth calling, your mic's actually right here. You don't have to run a mic, and then you have uh, with that Wi-Fi and uh, 3G, 4G SIM card. I will mention is that I have not used a 3G or 4G SIM card, so I have talked to T-Mobile about getting that and talking to them about you know kind of what this is and they're like hmm, that's a strange application we're gonna treat it as a tablet at least that's what the customer service rep who I spoke to on the phone said and that they would charge me a tablet data plan and that's kind of how this would be activated so I just giving you that to you because I never used it I don't know how that feature works maybe someone in the comments is using it um, they can kind of comment to how that feature works and if it provides good data or if it's not worth it. Now that we talked about some of the main features, let's talk about the big thing, the big elephant in the room. This is a factory replacement radio. So this has to have a relatively ease of integration because they market it as this plug and play solution for your Acura TL, kind of bring it into the 21st century. I mean, we freaking have a cassette player as a radio. So it's, you know, this car is beautiful, I love it, but we have a cassette player. So I could totally understand you wanting to change that. And this is like, what you would want you know tesla is leading the charge with their vehicles their elon musk is a freaking billionaire so it makes sense that this is what's popular now this is what people are looking for but this is sold as in market as a factory solution plug and play installation so let's talk about some of that factory integration so as you saw in our first impressions video um kind of the first point of integration is going to be the installation so with the integration is going to come connecting to the vehicle and interfacing with the actual vehicle but installation is kind of one of the big things so as an installer myself when i was putting this radio together you saw i used velcro i was so confused that there was no other mounting mechanism besides pressure so i i'll show you what i did i ended up drilling some holes and using that metro dash kit that we sell but from the factory this thing is very strange because you're kind of using just pressure to keep the radio in. As an installer, it doesn't feel safe because I can pop this out in about a second or two and then I kind of have your radio. There's really nothing else without force that I can't remove. And I understand those plastic clips will break, but if I, maybe I'll think about filling it, I probably won't. But if I pop this off and install the tablet how they mentioned in the instructions and just, I could easily just go whoop and I'm gone with the tablet. Now, someone would need to know that that's the case. No one would actually know. But just as an installer, knowing what is behind here, it didn't make it feel safe. That's one of the things I didn't like, but it made the install very simple. But again, I didn't follow that. You can if you want to. I ended up drilling some holes, taking the cover off the back of the radio, drilling some holes in it, kind of measuring up. I had to drill like four holes because I didn't measure correctly the first time. And using that metric kit to kind of place it where it needed to be and then seating it and then kind of messing around seating it again and I don't have the best perfect fit uh, you, it kind of has a little bit of a gap here but it makes me feel better about the install myself and again that's just a personal preference thing but I do want to mention it now next to the installation is the integration so since this unit is universal from 04 to 08 
there are differences in those connections. So the 08 vehicles um, and 07 vehicles actually come with an AccuraLink XM transceiver kind of um, module that allows it to talk to the satellites and get other information besides just radio information. And then it also grabs other information within the car back here compared to an 0406. It doesn't have the same amount of information coming to these connectors. So they send you different connections and you might, when you go to hook things up, go, well, why is this, like, why, why do I have extra connections? And it's because it's universal. I've seen that they ask and they try to ship you the correct one, but it always comes with extra connectors. So just know that. Don't be scared. It's just what how their integration system works. Um, now, part of the integration is with the radio is that they use a DSP to feed audio to the vehicle, and they feed a high-level signal to the factory amp. Now, that's a no-no in my book. You're going to eventually fry your factory amp, and you are going to experience distortion. I've talked to other people who have the radio and say they don't have distortion, but they're not car audio people so to say so they might not be hearing it they might be hearing a crackle in the voice or bass that sounds distorted but they just allowed it to oh i'm playing my music loud that's just how it's supposed to sound so there it for my case i will show you there is distortion at higher volumes it is cooking my amp some uh i'm paying the price for that but it's cool to have uh when it comes to regular interfacing with the re so along with that integration are those connections and now everything's connected installed now you're interfacing with the radio every day so if this is your everyday radio your boot up time is going to be very important to you you don't want to wait 20 seconds for your radio to start so that you you're already driving by that point so if you drive the car regularly the boot up time is almost instant you turn the key and boom it's on because it has an internal battery a very small battery it could keep itself on for short periods of time and it won't even turn off you won't even realize it it'd be faster than a normal radio but if you drive your car only on the weekends let's say you know this is your project car this is your baby you take care of it you only drive it on the weekends or very rarely the radio will actually take longer to boot up because it's after those 48 hours it goes into an actual standby mode where it needs to cold boot to actually get to the screen again so just know that actual boot up time is very short only about 10 seconds when you have that cold boot but when you're driving every day, the radio can keep itself kind of in standby mode and your turn on is almost instant, which is a pretty neat feature. Uh, they really thought about, you know, the integration of how someone's going to use this. No one wants to wait 30 seconds to a minute for their radio to even start so that you can actually play music. Well, that's interfacing with the radio. That's another part of the factor integration. The last part of the factor integration that this radio that this radio has over other radios is the climate control integration so right now my climate control is off I don't have anything I don't have the AC on the heat on no air flowing so normally in a car with navigation in this condition where everything is off it would show nothing up here so if you have navigation you know what I'm talking about these don't show anything they actually turn the display off um, when this happens with this radio I don't have navigation in this vehicle so this screen I actually added it has a plug I, the harness will be on our website if people are looking for it but I added this extra sub display because it comes with the navigation units I thought it was cool I wanted to have it because I didn't want to have to look down here I can look up there and I have my time so I added this to this unit so pretend this isn't here for a moment so down here are your climate controls and right now they're set to low but really they should be set to off because I don't have them on. You can see my fan is off. Everything. Here's my power button. Everything is. Let me turn it on. Now everything's off. So those. This. Don't worry about this. This just says low. So that's kind of how it works it. So if you do have navigation. You're going to run into the same annoying issue that I have. But if you don't have navigation. Again, this might be resolved already with the firmware update. I have not checked into the latest firmware before making this video. I want to kind of make it to where I am and kind of show their improvements along the way because I would be open to working with Navitech or Xiaomi to improve this radio so we can get it into something that we that Mobile Max would endorse and be happy to sell. But as the way it is now, it's not ready for prime time. But back to what I was saying. So these are your controls down here. 
uh, if you're not using this these, these will work fine you know you can oh sorry I'm putting the volume up you can leverage these and they'll work as expected you can see I have inside so if I turn that off it turns that button off if I hit this it highlights that if I hit that it highlights that I can put it in dual and dual turns on I can you know change the setting that I want to whatever location I'm looking for I can turn it off so the climate control integration is actually pretty good it's pretty solid the only issue you will have is the temperature so the temperature is in Celsius I know there's a firmware upgrade or software upgrade that's supposed to fix this um, but it is not fixed yet uh, in my case so here we are that's the only thing that bugs out and then the other thing is as you're putting the temperature up sometimes it like skips around so you might have to hit it a couple times for you to get to the temperature you're looking for or sometimes you might be just about to hit the temperature you want and it's gonna skip up so just know that might happen so now we talked about the climate controls and their integration um, one of the things I have noticed is that the system doesn't get as cool or as hot as it did with the factory um, climate control controller so to say so I don't know if that's just my vehicle or if it's standard I'd like to figure that out if you guys want to leave some comments down below does your car AC get as cool as it used to when you didn't have this radio installed for me that's not the case also when I first installed this radio it actually triggered my check engine light twice uh, when I first put it in and then kind of later on when I was driving around uh, for the same code I don't remember the code off my top of my head but you know after driving for about 30 minutes it shut off I just thought that was strange but alright so now that we talked about the standard climate controls you don't have navigation you're just gonna have the clock up here now you have navigation this has been bugging me for some reason I can just ignore it I tend to but it just bugs me from time to time if we look up here it says off it says AC it says low it says low and the unit is off on the factory navigation unit when you turn the off when you turn your climate controls when you turn the climate control off this goes blank this is all blank it just shows the clock and your music it doesn't show any other stuff so right now even though this is off it's showing that information that kind of bugs me that could easily be fixed with some software but it's just the way it is right now also I don't know if you've been paying attention throughout the video you would see this flash and something flash up here gonna wait a minute see if it does it but it has been doing it on and off so that's another weird bug with the climate control there it goes where it'll flash dual it'll throw this max and then it won't do it and then it'll wait a couple seconds or a minute or two and then do it again that's another weird bug that I found it just does it I haven't figured out a way to fix it I haven't really looked for extended period of time to see how to fix it but it is something that I wanted to show you